Yeah, that squelch out. Right, it's uh, eleven twenty on Sunday, the sixteenth of February. Um, what a fantastic day we've got! Uh, blue skies, no wind to speak of. I'm up on um, uh, Pant Mountain today. Uh, Mark's on his way up. He's already had a bit of a recce. Um, but I've come up. I was going to be up here about an hour and a half, maybe two hours earlier, because I want to recce um, the trig point, see how used it is, and uh, I was going to set up there and then just, you know, listen to Mark calling in and you know asking where I was. But um, it's it's not gone as planned. <laughs> but hey ho, that's uh, that's life. But uh, I know Mark's just uh, setting off now because I've just seen the message. Um, I'll give him a shout in a couple of minutes. Um, but about 100 metres away is the left-hand corner of the uh, wooded area, which Mark has, has recce and said it's 50 metres higher. So um, I think we might be going in there. Um, but what I'm going to do very quickly is uh, walk up the side of the wood, see how the ground is, and uh, make a judgment call. I might be out in the open. Um, Judging by today's weather forecast, it's going to be fine all day with sunny intervals, so um, hopefully we'll get some good skip. Right, catch you in a bit. Right, hopefully you'll hear me. There's a little bit of a breeze, but uh, it's quite pleasant. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, um, you see where the trees have stopped growing? There's a nice bit of green there. Um, I just had uh, a quick QSO on 19 with a breaker from Abba Bargoid, uh, just did a radio check for me. Um, hang on a second, let me just turn this around. Yeah, I was really surprised, Abba Bargoid, it's uh, oh, well over another mountain or two, and uh, I was chuffed a bit. He was saying I was uh, radio five, signal four to five, um, I think. Uh, but I did mention uh, there's a DX this afternoon on three, four, so hopefully that's another new, uh, another new cooler. Um, I'm just working my way up to the top of this uh, bit of the mountain. Um, I am timing myself because what we, me and Mark do is if I go and wreck your site I'll double the time it takes me to get there. Uh, then we've got a fairly good idea. Plus uh, I get the chance to see what the land's like. You know Mark uh, he does really really well. Uh, all credit to him, he, he does push himself, sometimes a little bit too much, but hey. Right, I'll catch you in a bit. Right, it's me again, as you can hear, we've got loads of, uh, we've got loads of noise and Olga. Um, I've been walking for about 15 minutes. I've got to the end of the wood. Um, in fact, I'll pause this and turn it round so you can see. Ah, oh, this is magic. I've come from over that direction, uh, 15 minute walk for me, so uh, it's half hour for Mark, so we've got plenty of time. Um, as you can see you've got the woods there, and it just descends into the valley, I'm not even sure whether you'll make that out because uh, the sun's shining down on me, um, but that is one hell of a view. Over in th that direction is, uh, I should think it's Bristol, almost definitely Bristol over there. Um, I'm just trying to remember what the map looks like or what the ground looks to the map. Um, but this is absolutely amazing. Um, and I know one thing I did forget was to uh, check the height. But this is... Uh, I think this is where I'm going to set up. See how Mark feels when he gets here. There's the tower, or one of the masts. Um, the trig point is over that way. It's about three pylons along and uh, towards this way. So uh, we're a little bit down on height, considering we've got to get over that, but you know, I think this is favourable. Right, I'm going to check the height and I'll get back to you. Right, where I'm actually stood, I'm 420 metres at ASL. Um, I 
I'm not too sure where I should venture up there because the closer you get to the pylons, the more EMC you get. Um, so I think this is probably what 200 meters away from them. So I don't think we'll get too much from them. But then again, you never know. But uh, I'd love to have gone right up to the top. But uh, I haven't got time today now. Uh, when I get back down, meet Mark at his car and tell him what I found. Let him see this. But uh, no, I'm quite gobsmacked. I always am when I come up to the mountains. Right, I can see some snow in the distant hills, which is uh, the Breckens. Uh, they're over that way, but you're not going to see that. Um, but it's probably been there for days. Anyway, I will catch you again later. Catch you in a bit. Bye-bye. Right, we're here. Uh, just pegged the tent down. But there's little or very no wind at all. We've got the uh, ubiquitous flasks. Flasks off by there. So now I've got the uh, tent down. Everything out that I need, I'll uh, take a flask over to Mark and uh, give him a hand. Quick 180. Sun's coming out again. Should be a good day. Catch you in a bit. Right, it's just two o'clock. Um, usual chaos at the start. Everyone's jumping in, and uh, we've got Olga to contend with. Um, Mark stations over there. Not, not sure if, uh, if it's in, in, in focus or not. But, uh, oh, maybe I should uh, turn it off and turn on again. Right, that's a bit better. Mark stations over there. Got a fantastic view out the door. But for some reason, I've got high SWR. Um, I haven't got my external meter today. Um, but it was saying it was up to seven. It's uh, strange. Anyway, I'll catch you in a bit. Well, we've shouted obscenities at Olga and uh, she's still cracking on. Um, phone's ringing in the background for her every now and again. But for some reason we've got a lot of noise on channel as well. Um, that's a lot of noise, I'm not sure if you can see that. I've had a very quick cue so with Michael, I think he's up on the uh, Licky Hill. So, hello to Charlie Tango 1176. I did hear Richard in Knighton. And I think I heard Tony, the wizard, in Bristol. But um, right now I think it's uh, a waste of time. Purely and simply because Olga's all over. Anyway, I will catch you in a bit. I'm enjoying a fag and a cup of coffee. And Mark is... Um, Mark is over there. Right, catch you in a bit. Well, I've had my bacon, beans and eggs. Ah, oh, fucking glorious. Um, got a coffee on the go. I've had a QSO with Jason, 965. Nice to speak to you again, mate. I've had a quick QSO with Sid. Um, I'm just waiting for it to go a little bit quiet so I can try and bring Kevin in, uh, which is Whiskey One in Pontypool. But uh, I haven't had a chance yet. So I hope you're still on there, Kevin. Um, catch you in a bit. Bye-bye.
I'm going to go down and pick him up on one fucking Sunday and bring him up here. First I've heard of him. Well, I've taken a trip over to Mark's Little Gap. Uh, it's like the Hilton. You, you can't actually see how much room he's got. He's had his dinner, which is more than what I do. I take it home and do it. Uh, back to you in a bit. While I remember, um, when we first came up, you know, it's an absolutely cracking day. I, I just can't get over, you know, it's February and the sun is absolutely fantastic. Uh, cracking view and uh, we've got three pounds plus of fucking order. Um, but we are getting through, we're making the trip over to, uh, well, I'm out of Canada, um, which is the first of all job. Um, Michael, nine. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the background there. There's, uh, it looks like a, a gravestone, but it's actually a, a boundary marker. Um, you can just make out words for boundary and assault. Uh, it's dated 1839. Um, I'll try and put my finger at it there. So, you know, a little bit of living history. Mark actually sent me over there. And when I came back, I told him it was a gravestone. <laughs> Mass grave. Uh, he sort of believed me. Um, but I did tell him it's just a boundary stone. Because Mark's got a thing about graves. Anyway, that's the station. Give me 10 minute pole up. I'm just taking a little wander out to uh, pass Mark a quick fag. A little chat. So uh, I'm going to go back to my tent. Time is five to four. Olga and her QRM is still banging through. Um, it's subsided a little bit. Um, oh, excuse me. But we've had a tiny little cue, sorry, Gary. Chai Tango X Ray 104 is just outside of Bath. Um, but uh, Olga's still coming through. She's uh, a lot later than usual. But uh, I just thought I'd better pick up the video and uh, say a quick bit. Um, so I've just noticed my battery's down to 33%, so uh, just in case I disappear. Thanks for the contact. <laughs> and I'll uh, catch you again soon. Bye bye for now. Very quickly before my phone dies again, um, I don't even know what the time is, but I'm really, really happy because I've had uh, a QSO with two Fox Bravo 105. Sean, who's in New Jersey, USA. Oh, what a brilliant day. We've been crushed by Olga, but we've, I've had two um, North American contacts. I am well made up. Plus, the 254 net, which runs on a Wednesday night, 7 till 9, maybe later, has had a bit of free advertising from Sid, 141. So, uh, I just want to say thank you to all the contacts I've had today, especially the North American ones. It's been bloody great. Right, catch you later. That's Andy, yeah, Chai Tango 3-0. Anyone else want to try us with a 3-0 there? I'm from the London there, Western Birmingham. Yeah, go Chris. That's Chris 4-0, no, 4-3-0. He's right in the back of the box today. Um, I haven't even shouted out to try him because uh, conditions...